better make sure your hand is in the right position. What I've got here is an IDPA target. So that's Robert Vogel and his Vogel Dynamic Training Organization. And um, before we left for break, we, uh, we were talking about the distinction between uh, competition shooting like IDPA versus, say, USPSA, for those who don't really understand the distinctions. Sure. Um, well, even before that, I guess, they're, they're both very similar. A lot of people, if they were not knowledgeable on them, they would watch them. They wouldn't be able to tell the difference between gotcha. the two. Mm -hmm. What separates those two in my mind, that makes them very different from just about all the other shooting sports is the element of time. Okay. Um, it puts a, a, a premium on being fast, which I think is a real tactic, which I think applies very much into real life. A lot of the law enforcement training that I've gone through, <clears throat> it's based off of part-time. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of part-time, and I explain it like this. If you're given, say, a set course to do, uh, let's just say you're given 10 seconds to do it, um, the problem with part-time is it doesn't reward the guy that can shoot it in six seconds over the guy that does it in nine seconds. It's the if they get the same hits, uh -huh. it's the same score. Well, the reality of it is the guy that can get the same hits in a faster time uh -huh. is faster. If you're not operating under a system that rewards that, um, I just don't think that's realistic. So that's what both of those sports do is it's a very much a balance between accuracy and time. Uh -huh. uh, IDPA is simpler in the fact that literally – your time is your score. Whatever mm -hmm. you shoot, whether it's one target or in a bunch of targets in a, in a big course, your time is your score. They're going to add time for bad hits, basically. Yeah. And so it's it's a no-brainer. USPSA is um, similar. It's a little the scoring system is very complicated. It's much it's a little faster paced, uh -huh. and there's not as many there's not as many rules. Uh, but other than that, there there the, the skill set needed to excel is very similar in both of them. Gotcha. Now, would you rec? I know. I remember when I started ID. When I started doing IDPA, my reasoning for doing it, um, or motivation, more or less, was I wanted to be in a better position to use my firearm as a concealed carrier. Um, and and an IDPA in many, in large part, is kind of geared towards that more defensive style yeah. of shooting. Um, would you Would you say that it's still that to this day? Has it advanced beyond that? Has it not really met up? met up to that level or is it just some type um, of hybrid version of something else now? I, I think it's, I think it's similar to what it's always been. First and foremost, it, it is a game. Mm -hmm. If it's a competition, there's a score and there's winners and losers it is a game. Uh, so I, there's a limit to the realism there, but the skill set is, is real, obviously being able to shoot your gun, handle your gun, reload your gun, um, under pressure, under stress with the time going with other people watching, um, that factor there, I think that's the biggest benefit in, in any of those um, competition sports. Gotcha. Yeah, because I, I remember when I started doing it, though, initially, when I started doing IDPA initially, I had issues with still targets. <laughs> um, for whatever. What? Still targets. Oh, steel targets. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they always mix in some of the, uh, you know, paper, cardboard stuff and then steel targets. Sure. And, and still targets gave me a big problem. Is that something that you notice in people typically, or is that more unique to me? Uh, I, I think it depends on how you look at it. I, I think a lot of the, I, cause I hear people say that same thing a lot. Steel uh -huh. targets give me problems or whatever, because the steel is, if you miss it, it's still there looking right at you and everybody can see it. <laughs> paper targets, you miss, people miss paper targets all the time. Time, Well, yeah. nobody knows that until they, five minutes later, they check the score, right? Yeah. So they don't take it as seriously as, as the steel. And so, because they, they, they'll typically not leave that steel until it goes down. So they'll stand uh -huh. there shooting at it. And, and, uh, I think that's really the. The, the reason and typically they're a little bit smaller too so it's common gotcha now um with with your organization you actually do training outside of of, of law enforcement and you you train everyday common citizens as well um what, what's what's the range of the type of training that someone could expect to be able to get from you if they wanted to sure um i mean obviously a lot of it depends on the the students i have on my website basically three different classes listed in and to, to be fairly simple with it. I mean, the one is competitive pistol, which is just guys that are purely want to be better at IDPA or, or USPSA. 
Um, on the other end of the spectrum is uh, practical pistol applications, which is really more just for law enforcement, military agency type people that are, you know, not at all into competition. And then probably my most popular what I do is is an in-between called world-class pistol skills. And that's generally a mixture um, of, of practical applications and, and competitive shooting. Uh, but a, a lot of it depends on on the students yeah. um, as, as far as obviously what I'm going to what I'm going to start with. Um, but, but generally, obviously, getting people to shoot better. I mean, yeah. the fundamentals in the first part, the better somebody is, the more we can kind of jump into some of the more advanced things, uh-huh. such as movement and, and moving targets and things that a lot of people maybe never really do. Uh, but it just kind of all depends on where they're where they're at. Now, where do most people tend to gravitate to? gravitate towards in terms of the different qu- classes that you offer is it more the more competitive side more the combative practical it's it's kind of- definitely definitely a mixture i would say the the i would say the vast majority of people that would come to take a class whether it's a private one at my place whether uh-huh. it's anywhere across the country uh have an interest in both they, they, they want to dabble a little bit in competition if they yeah. don't already um, but they also, the vast majority of them, have their concealed carry license and have a mindset towards self-defense. So it's it's definitely not really one or the other. So most people are are in both of those spectrum. And I guess a lot of people, the, the, even the people that don't compete, they still seem to be open for it. Yeah. So it's it's definitely both. Okay. Now with you, what 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 would what, 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 uh, like a a typical? Because you're you're in off season now, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. this is more the off-season. So sure. when, when you're in season, what does a typical tra- training session look like for you? Um, yeah, well, I do a lot of, of private classes, which is generally smaller number of people, one to four people. Uh, I actually have a range at my at my house on my property. So okay. those, yeah, those are less people, <laughs> which is nice. I can shoot right out. <laughs> you just wake, up, right just wake up in the morning and just start training, right? <laughs> yeah, I can shoot out 800 yards right off my back porch, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I, I do those, and those are typically more during the week, uh-huh. uh, weekdays, and then the l- larger group classes out of state that basically people need to be recruited for. Um, those are almost always on a weekend, and a lot of those are obviously in different states all over the country, or maybe even out of the country. Um, and so those those typically get set obviously uh, around here in Ohio, mm-hmm. March through late March through October, other places, obviously California or somewhere down South, I could do something more in January or February. Um, but yeah, it's, it's typically more, more privates during the week. And then the bigger classes on the weekends gotcha. throughout the season. So when and you, along with the matches, cause I still shoot matches, just the bigger ones, but not, not as many as before, but I'm still yeah. doing that. What is uh what is your typical round count during the training session for yourself? During for the myself, on season. On season. And it's, it's, it's weird because, since I left uh, full time poli- being a full time police officer in the last five years, I've actually shot more rounds uh-huh. because I've just done so much more demos and training. But the practice that I get for myself going out to do what I want to do has yeah. been less. Gotcha. So I've shot right the last five years, right about thirty thousand rounds a year. So if you do the math on that, I think it's somewhere around five hundred rounds a week on average, straight for a year. Okay. Uh, which it's a lot, but yet there's some people think it's not that that much. I, d- I don't measure practice by how many rounds you shoot. True. If I were to measure, it would be by how much time you spend with a gun in your hand. Gotcha. I still do a lot of dry fire, a lot of handling. I do much more of that than, than actually shooting. Uh, so it's, it's a mixture of all that. Now, Mark, I've always wondered, especially with trainers, um, considering you guys function at a very high proficiency level, um, how, how is it that you manage? Because you're right, I've heard this quite often. It's, I don't really shoot as much because I'm doing a lot more training. Uh, when, when you're training other people, how do, how do you manage that? Like staying on top of your game in terms of being able to shoot at a high proficiency um, versus, you know, that fighting, fighting against the deterioration that could come yeah. with not being able to shoot as much as you normally would. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good question because, you know, I've, I've definitely tried to obviously stay up to speed and, and to be still be competitive at the highest level. Um, to be honest, I, I, I never really let up, but I've done this. I'm I'm 35, I've, and I've done this my whole adult life, even before, but but hardcore my whole adult life. So I, I think after a while, you can tend to ride on your experience a little bit, mm-hmm. even if you don't maybe train as much. Uh, but you know, I, I still I, I've got certain set things like with drills and things. I mean, I just know what. I should be able to do, and and I'm always checking that, you know, can I can I still do a El Prez yeah. four and a half fairly comfortably or, or things like that, yeah. and so I'm never going very long without doing that, 
And I think that's how people tend when, – when we all lose it, but when people tend to lose it more, it's when they have a long period of time where they don't do anything, where they don't shoot. And I, I just – I really never let that happen. Gotcha. And, and my whole life, I, I rarely – I can count the times on one hand since I was 18 that I've ever gone without shooting a gun, like one, more than a week without really? shooting okay. of, of something. Uh, so it's just – Maybe not a lot, but it's just like it's almost like an itch you got to scratch. Man, if I haven't <laughs> in, in a couple of days, it's just like I got I got to pick it up. Got to do gotta something with it. it. I got to get it to feel right, and it's, it's exactly what it's kind of become. What, whether I want to or not, yeah. really, that's really what it's become. It's just something I have to do. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Trust me, I, I get the same itch. Maybe not as much. Well, no, yeah, as much as you do. <laughs> but but I, I, I tend to do just wasteful shooting. Just go out there and just start spraying and praying and still targets and hoping I hear dings. Um, I'm pretty sure yours a bit. Your sessions are a little bit more focused. How often do you get to just kind of leisure shoot or do you at all? Uh, no, actually I do a lot, especially mm -hmm. in the off season. Like I probably shoot something just about every day. I mean, a lot of times it's just out my back porch. I grab one of the rifles I got hanging up. Uh -huh. oh, I'm going to see if I hit my 400 yard target or, <laughs> or I, I, I hunt a lot. And so, I mean, the woods are literally right beside the house. Uh -huh. So I'll, I'll just, I get bored for an hour, grab the shotgun and go out and, you know, go down through there or, or something like that. Um, but yeah, I have the, the, the whole pistol training thing, I mean, that's definitely become more like work for me, uh -huh. but the other stuff with just messing around with, with different guns, long range shooting or something, things that I don't compete in, uh -huh. I can actually have a little more fun with because, you know, there's no, there's no real pressure, pressure there. There's yeah. no performance that I'm trying to, to get to. So, awesome. but yeah, I'm always trying to do, trying to do something. Okay. So, uh, we're going to take another quick break and then when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the accessories that you make. Um, and then, and sure. also talk about some of the, the most common problems or issues that people have when you're training them. Okay. All right.